For this week's memo to Trump, I want to talk about gardening. Not in the literal sense, of course. I know, Mr. President, that you've never soiled your tiny hands with actual dirt a day in your life, although you have dirtied them in a thousand other ways. No, I want to talk about reaping what you sow. This week's unveiling of the newly redesigned Rose Garden was an apt metaphor for your presidency. Just as gardeners remove decades of vibrant, beautiful flowers and trees in the service of a brand, bland, new design, so too have you ripped up any semblance of democracy by the roots, sacrificing the lives of Americans with your carelessness and relegating our standing in the world to the compost hip heap of history. Your dynastic delusions of grandeur and you're filling the convention with your own family, perhaps because the more venerated members of your own party see you for what you really are, a failed television star with a well-intended and well-tended and growing authoritarian streak. Meanwhile, Tuesday's festivities alone would be enough for an impeachment inquiry over ethics in any other administration. The First Lady's use of the very rose garden she uprooted is probably a violation of the Hatch Act. On that same night, two of your adult children spoke from a different federal property, another glaring ethics violation. Meanwhile, Secretary of State Mike investigation. And then there was Vice President Mike Pence, whose venue was yet another piece of federal property, a location that one Republican delegate described as a, quote, reward for party loyalists. I'm appalled, but not surprised that your administration feels free to flout the rule of law and offer up this nation's beautiful public lands as a private perk to those who shovel manure on the garden of your ego. Not content to drag your entire party through the mud, you also besmirched one of the most sacred ceremonies in the American experiment, using the naturalization of five new citizens as political fodder, a move that is particularly galling because your administration has been nakedly hostile toward all kinds of immigration and because you apparently did this without the consent of these new citizens. Although I suppose ignoring consent is basically your brand. And for your grand finale, you gleefully trampled on literal centuries of carefully cultivated ethics and norms by accepting your party's nomination on the White House lawn, allowing thousands of spectators to gather in defiance of health experts in the middle of a pandemic, trampling on the lawn of the people's house. Because as much as you might wish it were different, the president is not king, and the White House is not your palace. It belongs to the American people who graciously allow you and your family to live there while you work on our behalf. Except you never held up your end of the bargain. Just like every deal you ever struck in your so-called business career, because you still refuse to be a president for all Americans. The fact is, I'm here. What's the name of that building? But I'll say it differently. The fact is, we're here and they're not. I, for one, am glad I wasn't there to witness your desecration of the People's House, Mr. President. Your growing authoritarian streak and insatiable hunger for power and domination disgrace every president who has ever walked those halls. But if you're so desperate to stay in taxpayer funded public housing following November's election, I was suggesting that would be much better suited for you. Federal prison. And while you're inside reaping what you have sown and paying your debt to society, Perhaps you could pick up some skills that are actually useful, like gardening. We'll be right back. 
Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.